Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Talia. I'm the Virtual Experiences Coordinator at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science, and I am connected right now via Zoom with Dr. Gabriela Chavaria. She is our Vice President for our Science Division at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science and is here today to talk to us all about Endangered Species Day. Maybe you knew today was an Endangered Species Day, maybe you didn't, but today is. Today is a celebration of all the conservation efforts that have come before today to help preserve our ecosystems and our wildlife across the planet, and also an acknowledgement of conservation projects and work that are still needed and still ongoing. In just a moment, I'm gonna hand it over to Gabby so that she can take it away and share her presentation. But I do just wanna say a quick hello to everyone watching on Facebook today. Hi, audience on Facebook. We're so excited that you've decided to join us today and we invite you to let us know, do you have a favorite endangered species? Maybe it's an animal, bonus points if it's a plant. Not many people can name endangered plants, but we would love to hear from you. I've got the Great Barrier Reef as my background today. It's a little graduate school memory for me and one of my very favorite endangered ecosystems. Um, so send us along or send us a message, let us know what you are thinking, what your favorite endangered species is. We would love to get to hear from you. Without any further ado, I'm gonna hand it on over. So Gabby, tell us, what are you excited about for Endangered Species Day and why is this an important day for us? Well, thank you, Talia, and thank you for, for that introduction. And, you know, it's so wonderful to be part of today's festivities all across the country. Uh, like uh, Talia was saying, we're celebrating Endangered Species Day. It's the 15th anniversary. And I'm actually going to share my PowerPoint with you. And please bear with us. Uh, because we are going to be going from PowerPoint, just briefly PowerPoint, and then we are going to go to a really cool video that is probably going to be about four minutes, and you know, and you will you will enjoy that part. But um, interesting. And we practice. Let the record show. We did. Gabby, I'm actually going to request control of your screen real fast. Let's see if I can help get us back on track. Okay, perfect. If not, what we can do, Talia, we can start with the video and then we'll, you know, we'll, we'll try to come back to the, um, to the, to the, uh, to the PowerPoint. But, you know, what I wanted to say and share with you was, you know, the Endangered Species Day, um, it's a celebration that it started nationwide 15 years ago. And, you know, and it's a, it's a great opportunity, it's a great day where people of all ages can join and celebrate and learn more about endangered species. Uh, here in the United States, we have over 1,300 endangered plants and animals, endangered and threatened. And, you know, and they have, you know, these species have really become rare and they are in danger and of becoming extinct. Uh, so today, you know, I wanted to share all of the different groups that, you know, have been working to protect uh, endangered species in the nation, statewide. And, you know, and I wanted to highlight a specific example, a specific animal. Uh, many of you in the audience probably know that I love bees. They're my favorite animal. But today, I'm not going to be profiling a bee. I am going to be profiling a species that has been dear to my heart and that was the species that really introduced me into conservation efforts in the United States. And that is the black-footed ferret. And black-footed ferrets is a species that um, it almost went extinct. But, uh, but thanks to the great efforts of conservation biologists, particularly in the states and also in the federal government, the United States Fish and Wildlife Service, we are very lucky that here in Colorado, we have a breeding facility where we breed the black for the ferret. So I wanted to share with you a four minute video. You will really enjoy it. And then we'll come back and quickly go through some really highlights and action items uh, to celebrate Endangered Species Day. So launch the video, Talia. So in 1979, the black-footed ferret was declared extinct. And then in 1981, it was rediscovered outside of Matitsi, Wyoming. And that really turned the conservation world upside down. 
so a captive breeding program was started in about 1985 because what they found was that small population of wild ferrets started to die off. They made the decision to capture up as many as they could. That was a, a group of 18 individuals. And they started uh, the current captive breeding program, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, that's very successful today. The National Black-Footed Ferret Conservation Center is the only captive breeding center like it in the world. We house three quarters of the world's population and every year we produce about 250 newborn ferrets, we call them kits, and the majority of those kits are released into the wild. If you were a black-footed ferret and you wanted to pick a way to survive, you would hitch your wagon to prairie dogs. They're an obligate predator on prairie dogs, and prairie dogs are a very, very resilient species. But all that changed when we settled the country because we started off farming the country, which reduced the habitat available for prairie dogs. Later on, we decided that we needed to increase agricultural production from the standpoint of domestic livestock, and so we poisoned the prairie dogs in order to have more forage for cattle and other livestock. And finally, we introduced inadvertently uh, an exotic disease, sylvatic plague, from the old world to the new world. And prairie dogs and ferrets had not adapted to that disease, had not evolved in the presence of it, so they were very susceptible to it. First thing in the morning when I get to work, we do a morning walkthrough to make sure that all of our ferrets have eaten from the night before and just do a general check on the health of the colony. So we just do a very brief visual inspection. We check their eyes, make sure that they don't have an infection or are swollen. We check to make sure they've been nursing. You can see the little milk corners at the corners of their mouths. Um, and just a quick overall body inspection. And uh, sometimes we'll double check the sex. Um, so this is a nice, fat, healthy male. I know, buddy, it's not very tasty. We find that the ferrets have a, a high susceptibility to a lot of diseases, probably stemming from their inbreeding as a result of the, our very small founding population of the captive ferret population right now. So today we're gonna to treat these kits and their dam because they have a coccidial overgrowth and that's a very common disease we see break out in ferrets a lot. Whole carcass prey is a very nutritious uh, food for the ferrets. So the kits start getting them at day 35. I get asked a lot of times, why do we spend so much effort saving one species, the black-footed ferret, when it appears the ecosystem seems to be fine? And I always say, you have to look at it as not just that one animal, um, but the impact that it's had on the entire ecosystem where the animal lives. What the staff here does every day, I think is probably some of the most important work in the conservation world. Today, every day we see hundreds of species disappear on this planet. And it's, it's an honor to work in a program where we have an opportunity to really bring back a, a, a species. And the ferret is a perfect conservation vehicle for the short grass prairie. We know that where its habitat, where it lives, there's other species like the swift fox and the burrowing owl and the prairie rattlesnake. So all these other species are brought along with the ferret in saving its habitat. Gabby, tell us a little bit more about Endangered Species Day. What's got you excited for this day? Well, you know, you saw in the video, one of the most exciting things is, you know, these, uh, the ferrets are just stoic, amazing, awesome animals. And by having them in the landscape, that landscape, that habitat is a healthy habitat. Like you heard in the video, they provide a lot, a lot of, uh, you know, bring a lot of the species into this habitat, creating these healthy ecosystems. But we couldn't do it alone because, you know, without these breeding programs, ferrets couldn't survive all by themselves. So they need a lot of our help. And that's why they continue to be in the endangered species list. And I don't know, can you see my slide, my PowerPoint? Yes, I do see your slide. I see a constellation of different logos. 
Okay. So I can move it. Now I see a very cute black footed ferret. Perfect. So, so that, you know, and that, you know, one of the things that, you know, we're doing for endangered species all over the country is to help all of these 1300 or over 1300 that we have. Uh, the ferret has been a success story. Uh, we know that, you know, you can see in green here, you can see the historical range of grasslands that used to be uh, part of the United, the, the whole, you know, the Americas. And a lot of this habitat has been, you know, reduced or has been disappeared. So we have very few places where we can actually relocate a lot of these animals. But the ferrets, you heard, you know, they were rediscovered in Metizi, Wyoming. And then, you know, we've been able to reintroduce them in several places. You hopefully you can see a lot of these numbers where we have been able to reintroduce them. And one of the places that I had the great pleasure to be part of this reintroduction was in Mexico. And in preparation for the reintroduction, the Mexican biologists designed this little booklet called Passion in the Prairie to really help people understand why it was so important to reintroduce the ferret who historically used to live you know, in Mexico. They're native to the to North America. So they created this, you know, little booklet to really get people to be part of this reintroduction. And then I was able to go into Northern Mexico, which is the, the southernmost distribution of great grasslands. And we reintroduced the ferret down there. So, and it was just one of the most amazing things, probably second to the reintroduction in South Dakota in the Cheyenne River Sioux, when you know the tribes really welcome you know the ferret you know an old relative coming to the land so but you know ferret does really incredible we have so many opportunities to see them around here and you know for those of us that live here in denver city park used to have ferrets used to have a lot of prairie dogs so and we have in the collection of the museum in our scientific collections we have one of the oldest ferrets ever captured here in City Park, and we collected it back in May 5th of 1912. So we have that specimen in our collections, but we also have an incredible diorama uh, that is in our North American hall. And I would like to invite you all, after we reopen, to come and visit our Blackfoot Fair recovery. Uh, diorama, so that way you can learn a little bit more about these incredible creatures that used to be here, right here, they were our neighbors. And if you want to really learn more about them and see how they behave, we have a couple of really great cam, uh, live cameras. Uh, our museum in Fort Collins, the Fort Collins Museum of Discovery, has a live cam that you can, you know, you can go online and follow some of the ferrets. They're very elusive, I'm telling you. So, so that would be great that you can see them. The Rocky Mountain Arsenal also has a live uh, ferret display. So if you're lucky enough, you can see them. And then this morning, uh, the National Zoo sent me this great photo of these little kids that were born on May 10th. And they also have a webcam where you can see a lot of these ferrets. So I think, you know, if you all want to learn more, not only more about ferrets, but learn more about endangered species, please do, because there's so much we can do in our daily, you know, in our backyards, when we go out. And, and it's just very important that we continue to protect this incredible species that, you know, they're part of the landscape and they represent healthy habitats where we live. So I think I'm going to finish there because I'm pretty sure there's lots of questions and uh, lots of interest, Talia. Yes, indeed. We do have lots of questions coming in on the stream and uh, a lot of comments saying, oh man, those are cute. What a fabulous picture. Uh, we do even have a comment from someone saying, that's my favorite picture of you, Gabby. So you've got some fans as well as the ferrets. Uh, folks, Excellent. you can keep those questions 
coming as well. I am watching the stream right here on my handy dandy device. Uh, so I will be able to pull as many questions as we have time for to ask our expert live and on the air. The first question that I'm gonna to direct to you comes from Melissa. She wonders, do some of these ferrets live in the wild in Colorado? Where can we find them? Uh, yes, we have some of those, you know, they're very, you can see them in the wild in the Rocky Mountain Arsenal. Uh, what happens with ferrets, you know, they're difficult to see in the wild because they're nocturnal. And unfortunately, I didn't put a photo, but go and find it online because you will see that in the evening, when you spotlight some of these ferrets, their eyes, they just go bright green. So you can really see them uh, in the field. So, and we have, you know, they go wild, you know, we have them in Arizona, we have them in Mexico, in the prairie where I was reintroducing them. Uh, we, you know, they in South Dakota also, and it goes all the way into Canada. The Fish and Wildlife Service was able to do a reintroduction in Canada several years ago. Very cool. Another related question comes this time from Elena. She wonders, are black-footed ferrets a keystone species? And before you answer that question, can you define for us what keystone species means? Yes. Keystone, keystone species are a species that are critical in a habitat and that by them being in this habitat, you know, the rest of the ecosystem comes, you know, and provides that healthy habitat. He, um, black fur fairy will not be considered a keystone key, key key species. Uh, actually, the black, the black tailed prairie dogs are more of a keystone species because they're the ones that are provide, you know, they are the food. And without the food, the ferrets, you know, wouldn't survive in that ecosystem. The, the burrows that prairie dogs build in these areas also create habitats for the burrowing oil, uh, owl, for snakes, or for so many other habitats. And the black-tailed predator also recycles a lot of the soil matter. So other, you know, big carnivores that live in that area, or even in livestock, you know, they need that recycle of matter. So we need black fruit ferrets because, you know, they eat the prairie dogs, otherwise we will be, we have a lot of prairie dogs. Uh, but they're not keystone species. Very good definition and a good answer. I got to throw out there that one of my very favorite animals, in fact, my number one favorite, is the bison, another prairie species that's very important mm -hmm. to the health of that ecosystem. Maybe someday yes. we'll do a talk about bison, but they're not endangered, so no worries there. All right, a question now from Joe, uh, wondering, are there plans to reintroduce ferrets to the eastern areas of their range? He notices that Nebraska has no reintroduction. Yes, we don't, you know, the challenge with reintroducing some of these species is the ferret needs a uh, large habitat. Uh, a lot of the threat to, to uh, the ferrets is the food supply. And in many areas still today, uh, black-tailed prairie dogs are considered a pest. So a lot of, you know, uh, fields and people continue to kill them because, you know, they're making holes and uh, so we don't have the habitat, especially, you know, in some areas in, you know, the central plains to really release a lot of these uh, black footed ferrets. Uh, the reintroduction in Mexico took a lot of cooperation with a lot of the private landowners. And, you know, and that's why we developed these, you know, Pasión de la Pradera. So to really educate the public about the importance of black tailed prairie dogs, so we could reintroduce the ferret. That makes a lot of sense. Conservation is complicated. There are often a lot of different issues, a lot of different perspectives, a lot of different viewpoints and livelihoods that are central to making these decisions. So yeah, it's complicated. A question now from Rita wondering, some people have, have ferrets as pets. What's your opinion on that? Should we be keeping ferrets? Well, you know, the first distinction is uh, there are many different species of ferrets. And, you know, and not all of them are, you know, grow in the wild. So the uh, Mustelidae, the family of the ferrets, has a lot of different uh, species. And some of them can be trained to be pets. pets. Uh, but the black-footed ferret is not a pet. 
Good to know. Yeah, there is definitely a limit there. And that's kind of where you have to stop. These endangered mm -hmm. species need to be in the wild where they can help eat up those black-tailed prairie dogs and keep our grasslands healthy. All right, I do see a couple more comments. Uh, Elena's 10-year-old daughter is excited to hear that I'm a fan of bison because uh, that is her favorite animal too. And we did have a lot of folks We'll read off. If you do have more questions, folks, go ahead and send those in. Um, I'll read off a few comments of people's favorite endangered species. Uh, Joe, who is our curator of dinosaurs, said the California condor, which is, you know, it's a modern dinosaur. It works out. Um, I see burrowing owls. I see spoon-billed sandpipers. I even see a couple of plant species in here. So congratulations to all of you. Sea turtles, Texas wild rice, uh, again, the rusty patch bumblebee, um, all kinds of good stuff. So thanks for tuning in, everybody, and sharing your very favorites. Um, at the moment, I don't see any more questions coming in. So just in case uh, we get a couple of last ones, I will direct one to you now, Gabby, that I'm wondering about. What can viewers who are tuning in today do to help endangered species, whether it's just the black-footed ferret, or maybe there's another that's their very favorite, or maybe it's to protect places where endangered species live? What advice do you have for aspiring conservationists? The first advice I have is learn as much as you can about the species or, you know, that endangered species that, you know, sparks your curiosity, your favorite animal. Become an expert on that. So that way, while you are learning about them, you will know what, you know, what kind of habitat, what kind of food they need, and then you'll start expanding into your knowledge. And then you will learn that, you know, a lot of these species, there are conservation efforts on the way. And you will learn from the organizations that are working on that. And maybe you volunteer and maybe you check them online and you start participating in a lot of their monitoring. A lot of them have volunteer uh, hours that even on the webcam, you can count the species. And, and a lot of that, what we need, you know, is scientific data to start, you know, addressing a lot of these conservation efforts. So read more about your favorite species. Very good. So that's your charge for today, everybody. After this, you got to get on Google and start learning a little bit more about those animals that you identified or those plants that you identified as your favorite endangered species. We do have a couple last ones that I'll direct to you quickly, and then it'll be time for us to say goodbye and continue our celebrations for Endangered Species Day in our own way. Uh, let's see. Christy wonders how many uh, black-footed ferrets are there today? How many exist? Gosh, that's an excellent question, and I'm, unfortunately, I can't see, but I'm sure the Fish and Wildlife Service people will kill me, and I'd rather not say the number. But uh, if you go into the Fish and Wildlife Service website and look into endangered species, and it will take you into the Black Forest Ferret Center, and they will have a lot of that information. Or you can also go to the blackfootedferret.org which is an organization of friends that help protect the black footed ferret. I don't want to say what number because, you know, we, the, the Fort Collins facility produces a third of a quarter of the ferrets in the world together with the Sioux and other facilities. So, so I don't, you know, that's a great question and I'm sorry I can't answer. That's okay. You know what? I think part of being a scientist sometimes is saying, I don't know but I bet you can figure it out. So good answer. Uh, let's see, there are a couple last ones that I'll direct to you. Um, Antonio is wondering, um, he's heard that prairie dogs can carry some diseases. Do those diseases affect the black-footed ferrets at all? Yes, and one of those diseases, Antonio, is the plague, which is also potentially impacts uh, human beings. And um, so the plague is being, you know, is present uh, in this country and it has affected a lot of the prairie dogs. And because the black footed ferret feeds on the prairie dogs, you know, they get, they, they automatically are getting the disease. But the United States Geological Survey developed a vaccine. Uh, Dr. Tony Rocky developed a great vaccine that, you know, it is now provided to a lot of these ferrets via aerial. She did these incredible experiments where, you know, in order for the black tail prairie dogs to eat the vaccine, she tested a lot of different flavors. And the favorite flavor of the black tail prairie dog to eat the vaccine was peanut butter. So, so anyway, so there's a lot of, you know, study trying to control uh, the plague um, out there. 
Interesting stuff. Yeah, that's another reason I think why prairie dog conservation can be such a touchy issue. Good question. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, as one last comment before we wrap up, it looks like our friend Justin was quick on the draw with Google and says that the IUCN red list shows 206 mature individuals of black-footed ferrets, which is so very few. But thankfully, conservation efforts are working hard to bring those numbers up and to bring those populations back. Great. All right. Thank you, Justin. Yes, thank you, Justin, for that quick Google. We always appreciate that. The Red List is a very reputable source, so that's mm -hmm. always good to start to look for those data. Without any further ado, guys, I think it is time for us to say goodbye and wrap it up. But before we go, we would love for you to leave us a comment and let us know how are you going to celebrate Endangered Species Day? What's something you're going to do? Maybe it's you're going to go watch those webcams. You're going to go Google black-footed ferret babies, which is what I'm probably going to do for the rest of the afternoon. Uh, <laughs> or maybe it's that you're going to go outside and go bird watching. Um, I'm watching those comments, so send us those comments to let us know uh, how are you going to spend your rest of the day in benefit of endangered endangered species. Gabby, what are you going to do to help celebrate this day? Oh, I'm going to continue watching some of those videos like you, you know, I just, uh, they're just fascinating and, you know, it's just such a great conservation story that, you know, it's just worth retweeting, sharing with everybody, uh, you know, all of these great efforts to protect the endangered species. That's right. That's a great idea. All right, everybody. It is time for us to say goodbye. We appreciate you tuning in today. So stay excited, stay healthy, stay curious, and keep tuning in for more exciting programming from the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. We will be back next week right here on Facebook with more science, more learning, and more fun. So thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Thank you.